Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. I wanted to do this video to give a little warning just because I've been seeing some people getting arrested and charged for a reason that I don't think is legal. I don't think it's proper. But what they're getting charged with is possession of a prohibited weapon, and it's for having something just like this. So this is a little plasma arc lighter. You can see it's got a little cover. Uh, when you open it up, it lights up. And when you push the button, you get a little arc there. And that's sufficient to light a cigarette or a bit of paper or something like that. It's not terribly powerful, but you can charge this up with a standard cell phone connection. The thing is, is that sometimes I've been seeing people get charged with possession of a prohibited weapon for having one of these. And so you're going to have to decide if you've got one of these things, whether or not you want to take that risk. Personally, I'm fairly confident that this is not a prohibited weapon. And you can tell that I'm confident about that because otherwise I wouldn't have it in the video. I'm not in the habit of getting myself arrested and, you know, I'm not going to do anything if I think that there's any chance that it's illegal and certainly not going to put it in a video. But here I am holding one so you can tell I'm pretty confident that this is a legal item. And so I wanted to walk through the law and show my work on this one and just kind of have a little discussion of these things because I really think it's kind of a terrible thing that I've seen people arrested over this. So let's go to the criminal code, which is always a good starting point. And they've got the definition of prohibited weapon. Now, part A talks about knives, and we're not going to care about knives because no part of this is sharp. If you had some unusual design that possibly had a sharp bit or a blade, then that might apply to you, but most of them, I haven't seen anything like that. So the second part is any weapon other than a firearm that is prescribed to be a prohibited weapon. And this language is actually really important because, and they, this had to be litigated, that any weapon other than a firearm that is prescribed to be a prohibited weapon, that's that's not just, you know, them talking for no reason. Something has to be a weapon first before it can be a prohibited weapon. So something that's not a weapon, but is in some way similar to something that they describe as a prohibited weapon is not a prohibited weapon. There's also an exclusion that uh, something that's a firearm is not going to count as a prohibited weapon. And that doesn't really apply to this. There's no way for this to fire a projectile that I'm aware of. And so it's not going to be a prohibited firearm or any sort of firearm. So let's have a look next at the relevant section of the regulations prescribing certain items as restricted, prohibited, etc. Um, it's got a long name, so I'm not going to go through it. But the bit that people are that I've seen police officers citing is this part right here. So any device that is designed to be capable of injuring, immobilizing, or incapacitating a person or an animal by discharging an electrical charge produced by the amplification or accumulation of the electrical current generated by a battery, where the device is designed or altered so that the electrical charge may be discharged when the device is of a length less than 480 millimeters and any similar device. Okay. So let's have a look at applying that. So first, um, is this thing under 480 millimeters? Yeah, definitely. I mean, 480 millimeters is quite a, a sort of large object. This one's quite small. Um, does it discharge, you know, electricity by the amplification or accumulation of the electrical current generated by a battery? I'm not an electrical engineer, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes, just in terms of what I see functioning. Um, is it designed to be capable of injuring, immobilizing, or incapacitating a person or an animal? No. I mean, this is clearly designed to start small fires, particularly, uh, on the end of a cigarette. It's not designed for that purpose. Could you use it for that? Um, well, we'll get to that. So the, but the critical thing is this is not designed as a weapon or, and generally won't be intended for use as a weapon. You know, a weapon is something that is designed as a weapon, which this is not, this is designed to be used as a lighter or intended by the person carrying it to be a weapon. Well, most people aren't going to be carrying this thing around as a weapon in that sense. But even if you were, it doesn't appear to be designed to be capable of injuring, immobilizing, or incapacitating any person. It It's just a cigarette lighter. Now, could this be used as a weapon? Um, I guess. I mean, anything could be used as a weapon. 
theoretically, you could ball this up into a fist and it might be more effective there. Uh, I'm going to link here to a video. It's not one of my videos. This is a video from InRange TV. They've got a series on her own. And one of the things they cover is stun guns and their effectiveness as a self-defense implement. And spoiler, um, the result is that they're not terribly effective because they rely on pain compliance. And pain compliance is one of the least effective ways of stopping a fight. If somebody is determined or if they're on drugs or something like that, they can typically fight through pain compliance. Uh, if they're trained at all, they can do so without too much difficulty. But the other thing is that a stun gun is designed to do a lot more than this is. This is a fairly small object and it's really not designed well, at least this particular design, to be used as a weapon. The first thing is that this little cover is going to get in the way. If you're trying to press it up against skin, it's going to interfere. So it's not ideal for that. And the next thing, and this part is going to suck for me, is that it isn't actually all that effective even when you try to use it as a weapon. And I'm just going to show here. This is going to hurt, I'm going to say. So, did you see me flinch there? That was me getting zapped. It sucks, it hurts, but it's not even the most painful thing I've experienced today. So, this is not going to be an effective weapon. I really do not recommend this, you know, as a self-defense implement in any way, shape, or form. Um, it is more effective, in my view, just by virtue of being a small, solid object that you could maybe, you know, strike somebody with, than it ever would be as a shocking device. Now, I will say that I have seen, not personally, but in a file, an example of somebody using a lighter as a defensive implement. But that wasn't something like this thing. That was just an ordinary lighter like this one. And what, what had happened in that one is that somebody had grabbed them and was holding on to them and was preventing them from leaving. And they were able to reach into their purse and grab their lighter and produce a small flame and hold it under the person's you know, arms, which caused them to release. And then that person was able to escape. I don't recommend carrying around a lighter for defensive purposes either. They're you know, this was a very niche and unusual use, but it's not, you know, theoretically impossible. So, but this thing probably made more sense overall. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're a bad weapon. They would not work very effectively. And I certainly can't see them actually falling within the, the definition of uh, a prohibited weapon here. And when we go back and we see here, Injuring, immobilizing, or incapacitating a person. Well, you saw me shock myself with this thing. You you saw that on the video. Did I look injured? Am I, you know, calling the ambulance right now? Did I look immobilized or incapacitated? Did I look like I was unable to do something like, say, finish a video? I don't think so. I mean, I'm looking at it. I don't even, I don't even have a mark. This, you know... It, it didn't do anything meaningful. So, yeah. Um, as I said, I have seen some people get arrested for having these things. And I think that they were bad arrests. But you will, you know, because this is something that I've seen people actually get arrested for, uh, I wanted to put the word out just that this is a possibility. Just so that you know that if you've got one of these things, there's a few police officers out there who are not super up on the law, who have arrested people, again, in my view, uh, wrongfully for doing that. So you got to make your own calls as to whether that's a risk you want to take. But, you know, I'm willing to hold one on this video. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you found this to be interesting or educational. Please like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to see more content. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Canada's National Firearms Association, the CCFR, the Canadian Shooting Sports Association, at the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited, and Mark Olivier Demour, and at the $20 level, Peter Hilger, Mark Whittington, Jane Baben Luxor, Haywire, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Bruno R., Andrew Elsich, and Rick JD. Thank you for watching. I also want to thank my uh, supporters at the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been interesting and educational, and I hope it's armed you with knowledge.